Happy Dancers, Katie here. Um, I know a lot of you can't make it to class right now and that can be really frustrating. So I wanted to give you a little something to work on. Uh, now this kind of time is a really good time to take some time in your own body, figure out where your body's at and what you can control about your body, uh, working in the best alignment that you can. Sometimes it's hard to focus on that when we're focused on steps and choreography and getting our leg up and all that good stuff. Um, any professional dancer has been through times when they lost their job, uh, maybe their company closed down, um, summer breaks, whatever, where you have to keep yourself in shape. And I think um, I really started to understand my body during those times, giving myself a bar in the kitchen and working myself out at home. So it's frustrating not to be able to be in the studio, but there's a lot we can do. Um, I'm going to start talking about the pelvis and the hips today. I'll probably do a couple other segments of the body coming up. Um, but not only is uh, the pelvis kind of the heaviest part of our body, uh, it's where we transfer a lot of our weight and it's kind of one of the big pieces that can go out of alignment and affect our ability to execute steps. So first we're going to talk about that alignment a little bit and then we'll hit some exercises. So. We want to be working generally in a neutral pelvis and some of you who have seen me for privates we have discussed this ad nauseum so this is a reminder for you um, but since you're at home you can take this opportunity to maybe check yourself out in the mirror and see where your pelvis likes to be so uh what do we mean by neutral alignment um we have three different things that the pelvis can do here one is called a posterior pelvic tilt. That's what you would know as tucking under. When we tuck under too much, our upper body tends to move back and you can see how you'd be falling back in space all the time. And since dancers want to engage all of this, a lot of times this is what I see from y'all, a lot of this. We don't want that, that's not ideal. The other thing is if you have really flexible low back and a lot of muscle here, uh, along with tight hip flexors, we get that duck butt, right? And that's what we, tend to focus on in our dance training is that we don't want that and we want to pull everything in so we do this but that ends up doing this right we don't want that either so what is neutral if you look at the bones of your hips you have these two little bony points in front and those are called the anterior superior iliac spine a lot of words asis if you look right here right at your pubic bone you can see how it makes like a triangle so we take your hands like this put it on your pelvis and look from the side, you don't want that triangle tipping forward and you don't want it tipping back. You want it straight up and down, like parallel to a wall. So that's kind of a good visual. Now this will change when we're lying down, uh, when we're lying on our front, on our back, these things start to feel different. Also, when you're just standing is different from when you're actually moving. So we're gonna start by lying down and we'll start messing around with this position. But uh, you take a second, look in the mirror and just kind of take some walks, stand naturally See where your hips like to be. You know, do they do this? Do they do this? If you're one of these people, you're gonna have to think about tucking under to hip neutral. If you're one of these people, you're gonna have to think about actually sticking your booty out and pushing up through your feet to hip neutral. Um, we're gonna try to balance all these muscles with some exercises. So that being said, I'll also just tell you really quick to think about what motions are available in the hip socket. It's a ball and socket joint that gives us all this huge range of motion, right? That dancers love to stretch. That's all great, but that means we have to strengthen in every direction. Um, so what we have available in our hip is flexion, we have extension, and we have uh, abduction, which is bringing it out, and adduction, which is bringing it in. So we're gonna work on all those muscle groups. What affects our pelvis is our low abs, our butt, that's what helps us bring it under. Our hip flexors and our low back, that's what tips it this way. And then we have our outer hip muscles and our inner thigh muscles, which are gonna do this, and they're gonna do the squeezing. So we're gonna do a little bit of all of that, um, and you can kind of decide what you need to focus on based on what you're seeing with your posture. All right, so let's start laying on our back. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, kind of new to this videotaping thing. So give me some feedback. Uh, we're going to start on our back, we're going to make that triangle with our hands, and we're going to assess where our neutral is. So we don't want this triangle to be tipped up or tipped back, we want it to be flat with the floor. So you take a peek at that, see what you think. 
We're going to take a couple of breaths just to bring ourselves into our body. So take in an inhale, take an exhale. Feel the ribs expand backwards into the mat. Inhale and exhale. Okay, now we're going to start working one muscle group I completely forgot to mention, the transversus abdominis, muscles that run this way across your low abs. And there's also something called the multifidus in your back. Those kind of stabilize your pelvis in place. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna exhale like you're blowing through a straw, keep exhaling, push that air out, and it's gonna activate that transversus abdominis, but try not to tuck, okay? We're not tucking. All we're doing is keeping a neutral pelvis wrapping around from the outside like a saran wrap. Okay, so take an inhale and exhale, blow through the straw. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, and inhale. And exhale. As you get to the end of the exhale, blowing the air out, you should feel all that contract. Inhale one more time. And exhale. Good, now we start moving the pelvis. So we're gonna move out of that neutral on the exhale. You're gonna tuck your low back onto the mat and release. And you might feel your butt start to activate a little bit because that helps to tuck our pelvis. That's okay. We wanna make sure our abs are doing it too though. So you really wanna think about those bottom ribs coming down towards that ASIS bone and the ASIS coming up to the ribs, release. Two more times, exhale, shorten the space on the front body. Inhale, release. One more, shorten the space and release. Now try to find your neutral one more time. Maybe shake yourself back and forth. Take your hands, slide them under your low back. Do you have a little space there? Check your ribs. Mine are kind of popped out. My ribs like to do that. I'm guessing yours do too. So relax those ribs a little bit and make sure there's a space under the low back. So there we have our neutral. Now we're gonna start working the stability from side to side in that neutral. That takes the other abs, our obliques, and again, our back stabilizers. So all we're gonna do is open one knee a little bit to the side and back up again. And the other one, and back up. Go for it, as I keep talking, open and close. So it's like a little bit of turnout. The thing is, we don't want our hips to rock to the side. We wanna keep them nice and square. So that may mean that you can't get your leg all the way to your full turnout. Maybe you only go halfway. Now we're gonna start thinking about a rectangle from those hip bones up to our ribs, this is facing very square and it's not really moving anywhere. And this is a really good visual for everything that you do, especially like pirouettes, right? We want this lined up over this, top half over bottom half. Couple more. Don't forget to breathe while we do this. Open, close, and open, close. Good, now we're gonna work in what we call our imprint. That's the tuck. But it's not an over tuck, right? It's just a little bit of a tuck. So let's round that low back onto the mat we're gonna pick one foot up, we're gonna put the other foot up. Now we're gonna work keeping this imprint as we start to challenge our abdominals. So you're gonna tap a toe, come up, and tap, and up. Good, tuck more as that toe reaches away. And tuck, and up, good, tap, and up. Two more, tap, and up, one more, tap, and up, good. I have to wiggle out my toes because my feet aren't in shape and they cramp. Uh, okay, now we're gonna work internal rotation. So we have our external rotation and we have our internal rotation. Everybody loves to do turn out. Turn in is pretty difficult. So this is really important to balance our hips too. We're just gonna rotate the feet apart and back together, keeping your knees together. Rotate the feet apart, back together. It's really tricky. I already feel my hips cramping. So <clears throat> we don't do too many, but we just wanna work this a little bit. We go three together, two together, one, together, and rest it down. Whew, that's hard. Good work. All right, what are we doing now? Check my cheat sheet. <laughs> okay, we're gonna turn over. Right, so, flipping on your belly. Now your neutral is gonna be very different. It's gonna feel very different. A lot of times our back really wants to arch when we're laying on our stomach, so we do have to think about tucking more through our glutes to keep those hips tucked down. Especially, again, if you love to use your low back, if you have like a really great arabesque, you're gonna have a hard time keeping these hips tucked. So hopefully you can hear me as I lay down on my stomach. We're gonna do a couple of tuck and releases here, and then we're just gonna do um, a simple leg lift in parallel, then we're gonna do in some turnout, thank goodness, right? Okay, so your head is gonna face straight down, 
I'm gonna keep mine tilted so that you can hear me, but this is your position. Head down, nice and parallel. All right, here we go with the hips. You're gonna let them go, and then you're gonna pull your back pockets to your heels like you're really tucking. Release, and tuck. Release, and tuck. One more, release, tuck and hold. Keep that tuck, and we're gonna lift one leg up. Try to keep it really parallel. Mine's probably not even parallel enough. It's gonna to wanna to do this, because your big mus butt muscle wants to kick in. Ready, other side, lift, and down, and lift, and down. Keep it parallel, lift. Now try to add some lower abs, see if you can scoop those in a little bit. Lift, and down, we go lift and hold. Ready, pulse it up, and up. You really wanna feel where that hamstring meets the seat, like right where your bottom of your leotard would be. Go five, four, three, two, one. Relax it down, lift up and hold. We go for five, four, three, Two, reach those toes long. Don't let the knee bend. Lift and down. Good. Okay, now we get to turn out a little bit. Yay. Keep your head down. I'm coming up. You're going to turn out like not even 50%, okay? And you're going to click your heels together. You're going to keep those hips scooped. You're going to release the feet a little bit, and you're going to tuck the hips while you press those heels together. You're going to feel all your hamstrings and your inner thighs and your butt working. Give yourself some resistance. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release, we go for a five, and a four, the three, and a two, and last one, and release, good. Press up, sit between your heels for a second. It's always good to take a little bit of a break. Exhale. Shift your hips back and forth. Starting to work inside that hip socket a little bit more. Come on up. All right, on our back one more time. Now we're just gonna take it up a notch with a couple of exercises. We're gonna do a couple of hip rolls, what we call hip rolls, and then we're gonna do a couple of hip lifts so that you can see the difference, what happens with the pelvis between these two moves. So one is gonna go through the imprint and one is not. Ready? Make sure your feet are lined up, really important here, right under your knees. Your knees are right in line with your hips. I see a lot of this stuff and a lot of this stuff as we go along. All right, ready? We're gonna go through our imprints. You're gonna take an exhale, scoop the hips, press through both feet evenly, push up. Take a second, look at your ribs. Have you gone like this? We don't want that. Ribs are nice and connected. It's coming from the butt, feet are equal. Relax through chest, relax through the ribs, the belly, roll through that low back. So see how juicy you can be through your whole back. There may be parts of your back that don't wanna move. Try to move through those. A Couple more times up. And down, one more, and up, and down. Now we're gonna lift, but we're gonna keep a neutral. This one feels really weird. So you're just gonna push into your feet and lift those hips up, but without any tucking. See if you can still use this at the top. Now it's like you get karate chopped and you stick your sit bones down. Ready, we go up, stick them down. Up, stick them down. So if you like to over tuck your hips, this might be a good one for you because you can kind of feel this flexing in the hips right here. One more. Okay, now we're gonna add some challenge, guys. We're gonna go unilateral. That means one side of the body is working at a time. A lot more stability required. We get all kinds of other muscles going on here, but obviously we're still focusing on the hips. So we're gonna press up. Ready? Get your good position. Press into your left foot, point your right toes up to the sky. Flex and lower, point and lift, lower. And lift one more, lower and lift. Now careful where you put your foot down, right where it came off. Point up, flex, lift, flex, lift, flex, lift, toe ball heel, replace the hips. Let's go again, lift, point up, flex, and flex. Reach that heel away, really straight knees, and down. Look to see if your hips are still level. Don't let them wobble. One more, good. Now, if you're doing this at home, you're gonna pause the video, do that three, four, five more times. Good, go for it, feel the burn. All right, now we're gonna do our leg circles. There's two options here. We can do it with a straight knee, or we can do it with a bent knee. I'm a big fan of the bent knee option. Everybody loves the straight knee option, but if you're tight in your hip, it's gonna look something like this. Oh, I'm trying to do my hip circle, but oh, everything's just tight, right? You want easy movement in your hip, keeping them nice and square. So this is option one, this is option two. Ready, we circle and circle. Again, keep the circle the appropriate size to keep your hips square, 
That's the whole point, right? We're not working on extension right now. We're working on stability, which will make your extension better ultimately. Three and two and one. Reverse circle. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Good. If your hips got tight now that your leg is straight, bend it and see what happens. Keep it parallel. I don't know if my hips are staying square because I don't have an instructor. So do as I say, not as I do. Ready? Other leg. Test it out. And a circle. Now take a look at your bottom leg. Mine's turned out. I'm always telling everybody not to do that. Turn it in. Requires more stability. Good. And reverse. We go for six. And a five. And a four. And a three. And a two. And a one. You hear me breathing? That's something I'm not really focusing on right now. But the challenging part of the exercise, a lot of times it's a good idea to take that exhale. Like we practiced in the beginning, right? Exhale. Helps to pull everything in. All right. <clears throat> All right, on our side. So now we get into these kind of side muscles of the hip. We're gonna do a couple lying down and we're gonna come up on our knees. Um, that's an option though, if you wanna stay lying down. So first we're gonna do our leg swings. You're gonna be down on your side. You wanna make sure everything's stacked up. So if you're on a mat, come to the back of the mat. Make sure you're all in line with the back of the mat. Take your legs forward, 45 degree angle. You wanna keep that neutral. This is the whole point here. So first of all, make sure you're not like this. Press this hip down. Make sure your hips aren't gonna go back. They're not gonna go forward. They're gonna stay right where they are. That's the hard part. Lift up to hip height, flex your foot. This is the hard part right here, guys. Flex in the hip, it feels really weird. And point to the back. Good, kick, kick. Point back. And a kick, kick. I haven't done these in a while. They probably look terrible. Good, we go for three. And point, and two, and point. And one, and point, and take it down. Good, again, pause, keep going if you really wanna feel the burn. Now bend your knees, don't bring them all the way up to 90, bring them halfway to 90. We're gonna do some clam shells for our turnout here. Open, close. Now this may not feel like a lot of work for you. Dancers tend to be really strong here. If you have a resistance band, go ahead, pause the video, make a small loop, tie it in a knot, put it around your thighs, right here by your knees and you're gonna work into the band and you're gonna press and press. Good, then we take some pulses. Pulse it up and up and up. Good, we go for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. All right, coming up. Take it to the other side. So, one side might feel quite a bit different than the other, that's okay. It'll look different from the other side too. Let's push that hip down, make sure there's a little space under the waist. Up to hip height, flex that foot. Again, trying to keep parallel, trying to keep those hips square. Probably can't get a great range of motion at first with your hips being neutral, so don't kick your face. I'll try to do it wrong for you, really wrong. So this, no. And that, arch back, no. Keep everything still. We go for three. Kick, kick, two. Kick, kick, one. Good. All right, bending those knees halfway. We clamshell. Up. Kind of keep the toes together. Not a big deal if you want to raise it up a little bit more in space. Feel a little bit more around the top of the hip. Good. We pulse, pulse, pulse. Pulse. We go for 10, 9, 8, keep breathing, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and down. Good. Coming up, all right, shake it out for a second. We're going to stretch those puppies at the end. Now we're going to do our glute medius work. Really big on this. Anybody who's had me gets a speech about it. So the glute medius is not your glute max. The glute max is one of your rotators. The medius works more in parallel and raises the leg out to the side, but that also means it helps you push out of your standing leg, 
and stabilize and adagio and balance and all that good stuff. We kind of like to skip this muscle group, kind of like to jump right to the big muscle. So we're gonna make it a little more challenging. You can lie down and do this if you want to. If you want a little bit more of a workout, you can do it like this. I'm gonna tip over, take top hand on your head or on your waist, everything in one straight line. Ready? We tap and lift. Again, we're up off the floor. We're working unilateral, one leg. All kinds of stabilizers work in here. We go for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Flex the foot, circle and lift, circle and lift, circle and lift. Good, you want your head in line with your spine. I'm looking at you, so it's not really. We go for five, four, three, two, one. Reverse, six, five, four, three, two, one. We bend and kick, bend and kick, bend and kick. Good, touch your knee almost to your nose and then kick someone who's really irritating you. And kick, and kick. Good, we go three, and two, and one. Hold, raise your arm up overhead, hold, and come on down. Take a breath. Hopefully that's easier for you than it is for me because I'm really out of shape. You guys are making me work. All right, lift, 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 and lift for four, three, two, lift and hold, flex, circle, 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 five, four, try not to turn out too much, two, and one, reverse, keep that torso still, five, four, three, two, one, ready, bend, and kick, bend, and kick, Try to get a bigger range of motion than I've got right now. Four, three, two, and one. Woo, come on down. Hold it up there if you can. Take your arm up overhead and then take a break. Woo, okay, good work. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna take it onto all fours now. This is always a good position. Um, again, I always give my dancers speeches also about upper body strength. We'll do maybe another section for that. But anytime you get on your arms, do a little weight bearing, it's really great for stability through your whole shoulder girdle. A lot of you come in with your scapula like winging off your back, can't figure out how to flatten that down. Uh, that's a muscle group that works when you're on your hands kind of pushing. So it's always a good idea to do a little bit on the arms. Uh, also, again, not a lot of our body is on a supported surface so we have to stabilize a lot but here we're going to focus on the hips again okay uh, let's do a couple cat cows because those are always good so we're working again through that anterior pelvic tilt through the neutral into a posterior pelvic tilt follow with the head just because it feels good let's wave through our spine inhale and exhale a couple more inhale and exhale one more, inhale, and exhale. Okay, coming back to a flat back. We don't want our elbows locked out like this, all you hypermobile people. Pull it back a little bit, almost like a slight bend. We don't want the ribs sticking out either. Pull those puppies in. And then your head's gonna be, try to be right in line with your spine. I don't know if mine is, you can let me know. But we don't want it up, and we don't want it slumping down. Somewhere in the middle, okay? We're gonna flex our foot, and we're gonna bring our leg up like so. So this is really gonna get into the glutes and the hamstrings because our knees bent. We're gonna do little heel presses and you're gonna to have to scoop those abs under. Good, kick up to the sky. Try to be parallel. I know I'm probably not. We go four, 10, nine, eight. We're working our abs here. It's pretty good, full body work. And four, and three, and two, and one. Come on down, other side. Ready, kick it up. And then up, and up, and up. Good, pull those abs in. Remember that tuck we did when we were laying on our stomach? That's what we want in our hips, right? We don't want any of this stuff. Pull it under, because gravity is making us want to arch right now. We go for five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Come on down. If you need to take a second to roll your wrists out, that's cool. Come back in it. Set the shoulders, set the ribs. Now we're gonna work that glute meat and our rotators out to the side a little bit. We're gonna kick it up and down and up and down. Ready, five 
and four, and three, and two, and one, hold, kick, bend, kick, bend, kick, bend, eight, seven, six, five, four, you got it, three, two, and one, come on down, other side, lift, 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 we go for five, four, can you hear me, three, two, lift and hold, kick, bend, kick, bend, kick, good, seven, almost there, six, five, four, three, two, one, and take it down, Woo! stretch it out. All right, that's some great work, guys. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna show you a couple quick stretches you can kind of do on your own time. Uh, everybody knows piriformis tends to get super tight when we're turning out a lot. Really important to stretch that. So you can do any variation on this, kind of a double pigeon. Um, if you're feeling really tight, you can do it this way. You can do it this way. Anything where you're in this sort of figure four position. Um, sometimes it's good to do it off the edge of a chair. Uh, you always want to do both sides. Breathe in your stretches. Don't bounce, but it's okay to kind of ease in and come back out again. Um, again, another one really important. Stretch those hip flexors. Most of you are going to be really tight in here. And this is one of those things where we like to go like this. Don't do that. Tuck those hips. Bring that pelvis under. And then ease into the stretch. Come back out. Ease in. That kind of thing. All right? That hip flexor, the psoas. The one that attaches to the low back can be really cranky. Tip over the side. You can get that one a little bit more. All right. Hope that gives you something to do for a few days and uh, let me know how it's going. I'll try to include my contact information. Feel free to reach out with any questions and stay well, wash your hands, be good. Bye-bye.